Hello, it is me again, Fredrex2007 here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. And yeah, it's been, a, it's been a while since I'm talking to a camera like you guys. It is kind of weird, isn't it? You guys are the camera. But anyways, yes, today is another review of another horror film series, which is clearly something I've been looking forward to since I was 15, since the movie came out on Netflix back in October 13th, 2017. Yeah, I was, I was 15 at the time. I've been wanting to watch this movie on Netflix for quite a while now, but life gets in the way. And now, since it's now 2020 and there's rough times going on around here, and since September 10th this year, they already are, they already put out the sequel. So, I'm reviewing both of them right now. And it is, of course, the Babysitter franchise. Yeah. Haven't seen that coming, haven't you? You sick freaks. Yeah, you get to see what the tagline says. The dream girls always become a nightmare. How ironic. Very, very ironic. So clearly, I'm reviewing the first movie first and then the second movie. Now let's get to the analysis. So yes, the release date was since October 13th, 2017 in the USA. And it's been directed by MCG. Film series, also of course, the film series called The Babysitter. Screenplay by Brian Duffold, producers... Producers of MGC, Zach Scaler, and Mary Vola. So yeah, that's the analysis for you. And the movie begins with this main character, this 14-year-old boy named Cole. He's always afraid of everything. He is kind of a freak. He is actually kind of a freak to everybody, because he's always the weird kid in school. He is always afraid of needles when he gets therapy in his, ho in his local hospital. He tries to explain his parents of why he's afraid of everything because he's such, you know, the P word. <laughs> but, and he always gets a, gets uh, beaten up by bullies like these douchebags that always comes into him when he's in his neighborhood. Until then, his 16-year-old babysitter comes to rescue him and always gives him a good time. So, later in the film, her... Cole's parents are going out in the, on a business trip or whatever. I just don't pay enough attention about this movie yet, whatsoever. So literally he's having a good time with his babysitter, you know, having all the fun and actually having a little crush on him, I think. Having a little crush on her. So, <laughs> so yeah, they're always playing part. They always love being in the party and always being in the pool, like doing all the fun stuff. And they love geeking out about sci-fi things. Like Cole loves sci-fi things. He loves Predator. He loves Aliens. He loves Star Trek. He loves all that stuff, including, including his babysitter, B. Yeah, she loves that stuff too, because, you know, they're being like best buds. And even when Cole's going through very, very, very bad times from his life, being a 14, uh, being that one 14-year-old weird kid, and uh, even his best friend Melanie tries to help him out. And even when he's gonna, uh, even when she dares him to check out the, if his babysitter is actually hooking up with someone in his house, so he'll stay up late to check it out. So he did one night when he went to bed, but he didn't. So he checked out downstairs, but clearly. B is inviting these uh, kids, the, all these teenagers that he doesn't even know about. So the so the B's friends is Sonya, John, Max, Allison, and this weird kid that B is actually going out with. So they're doing this game of, you know, spinning the bottle or whatever so they can make out. So she ends up she ends up making out with the weird the new kid, but she ends up killing him by stabbing him in the skull with two knives. And that's the moment when Cole see that moment, and he's like, What the hell did I just saw? <laughs> and that's a big shocker right there, and he's literally having a heart attack, so... Yeah, so he literally hears them going to have to use his blood as a sacrifice, but no, honestly it's not. They're actually going to have to use his blood as the innocent, so they can do a ritual so that they can do whatever they want. So it's up to Cole to survive through the night with, from these crazy teenagers that's trying to use him for their black cult. Yeah. You heard me right. The babysitter and her friends are literally black cult worshippers, like Satanists. And they're trying to, you know, use the boy as the blood. And that's a challenge. And it's very bad, so... He's literally freaking out throughout the whole movie, and he better watch out, because they're gonna get him anytime. So, what do I think about this movie? 
it's pretty good actually, but mul but in certain parts of the movie, it's very freaking stupid. Okay, like let me get this straight. All right, let's put this. All right, let me put that out to here. It starts out with the casting first. What were they thinking? Like Wonderland and Netflix. Like what the hell? Why did you decide to put Instagram celebrities in this movie? I know you're very huge of picking Instagram celebrities to be part of your Netflix series and movies too, but why them? Why? Why you cast these people as the killers? Like why? Okay, I can see how the how this is turning out. Yeah, that's literally one of the cons I literally hate about these movies. Like, these goddamn celebrities. They get on my nerves. All the time. Like, they got, on, they got on my nerves since 2018 when I was on Instagram a lot when I was watching their comedy sketches. Like, they're so bad. And, okay, the dialogue, the acting, isn't too bad, you know. Just certain good average dialogue and acting into these certain Netflix movies. Like, what do you know? And the movie's actually, uh, is actually both into horror and slash comedy, because the movie is very humorous. Because, because you always have that one character, like John, he's the comedic, he's sort of the comedic one, they're all the comedic ones. Like, all the bad guys, the parents, the random people, the best friends, and including the main character himself, Cole. The main 14 year old boy, but yes, he gets a little humorous sometimes because he's always a coward, he's afraid of everything, and it's very funny. Ha ha ha. Alright, whatever, I'm sorry about that. But anyways, what do I think about this movie overall? It's good for what it really is. It's okay. I don't hate it very much. I get very annoyed by certain parts of the movie, like why there, why there's tarantulas in this basement? Like why? When, uh, God, I keep forgetting her name. I just keep, I'm just gonna keep forgetting everyone's names in this video. So, yeah, this movie's actually just not too bad. It's not, I've seen worse things in my, I've seen worse horror films in my life, just to tell you that. But this movie is not too bad. It's actually pretty enjoyable to watch. I get a few laughs at this one, so, yeah, I definitely enjoy, I definitely recommend you on Netflix. And I'm, I'm, I definitely recommend you to check this out on Netflix if you have a Netflix account. Okay, so yeah, I definitely, I, I like the movie, so yeah, all in all, I give the, I give the babysitter a 7 out of 10, just a plain 7, it's okay, it's good, you know, enjoyable to watch, so yeah, very, 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 very okay, for at its finest. So anyways, we, here we, here we go, the sequel, they already came out like a few months ago, it is called The Babysitter, Killer Queen, and what do I think of it? It's a piece of crap. It's terrible. I do not like this one. I prefer the first one. All right, let me tell the reason why. Okay, this movie takes place two years later after the events of Cole defeating the babysitter and her friends, you know, trying to use them as a as the part of the black hole, trying to use his blood. So two years later, he's now 16 years old. He's still the weird kid in the, in the school. And he notices a new kid coming to a school named uh, <laughs> Phoebe. So he literally thinks that Phoebe is the next killer, the next babysitter, the next babysitter killer. As, as I'm, I'm trying to tell you that. So, and even his friend, Natal, uh, Melanie, she's still there, including some new friends. So they ask him they can invite him over to the, to the Grand Canyon so they can have a big teenager slash, you know, having fun party. But clearly... Honestly, Cole is not feeling it because he doesn't think he's that normal like all the other kids. Like, I feel you, man. Because he's always the weird nerdy kid, the geeky one, you know. But then he tries to enjoy, enjoy his life by being spending time with Melanie and all the other, and the new characters. And including the, even including the new kid came along, Phoebe. So there's a big slumber, there's a big party near to the pool, near to a beach in the canyon, so... They end up taking a ship, and they, until then, Cole finds out that Melanie, yes, I mean Melanie, like, his best friend that that he knows for the past, like, a while, I think, I guess. Yeah, she becomes the next killer, the next babysitter killer, and that's a twist. And the twist is, uh, uh, 
the babysitter, the other babysitter characters, they came back to life from the dead because uh, Cole was freaking out because he saw them die because he killed them. You know, he survived through the night, but then he just they just came back to life because you know demons never die, I guess. Because now they just came back to life as demons, and now and now they're continuing trying to catch Cole by using the blood. So yeah, it's up to Cole and uh, Phoebe to get out of this situation. That Melanie is the new killer, and including the peep, including the kids from the last movie, are back to life to try to catch him. So I'm gonna get this to you straight here. It's literally the same thing like in the first one, but it takes place in the canyon. There's a few, there's a few hum, there's a lot of stupid moments in this movie that I hate so much. Is that they're putting up some TikTok references and some references of for Fortnite, you know, because the parents are literally at home, you know, playing Fortnite, and it's so goddamn stupid. I hate it. <laughs> so yeah, this movie's very dumb. I still hate all the characters except the main character Cole. You know, he's always the boy. You know, he's always the main character. So I have no, I have nothing to blame on him. But clearly, everyone else, I clearly have the blame on them. I even blame it on to the director and the writers. Like, what were they thinking? Oh yeah, I didn't get to a twist ending. Like, we're hopefully going to get a third one, a babysitter part three. So, since the second one probably turned into a hit a few months ago, so who knows? Maybe they'll make another one, a, th a number three. So I can watch it and I can torture myself again. But I do this for you guys because, yeah, the things I do for you guys. To watch these terrible horror films, but literally horror is my favorite genre. I can't pass that, okay? So yeah, when I what do I think of the babysitter killer killer queen? This movie sucks. It, it, really, it sucks really bad. It's clearly a rehash of the first one. They should have made it completely different to begin with. Except they actually take it place into a canyon. So... That's pretty much a challenge. You have to survive through the night in the canyon with these crazy, devilish teenagers. And they're annoying as hell, like John. <sighs> so yeah, this movie fair. This movie pretty much sucks. I give Babysitter Killer Queen probably like a two or, or a three. Yeah, okay, three. Okay, this movie sucks. I only like the character, Cole. He's the only cool thing in this movie. <sighs> so yeah. That was the babysitter. That was the two babysitter movies. So if you ever seen any of them, let me know in the comments down below and tell me what your opinions are about them. But clearly, I thought the first one was okay. I enjoyed the first one. The second one was just trash. Honestly, I hate the movie. I just hate them so much. I'd rather watch House of the Witch again than The Killer Queen. I am that serious. Because if you haven't seen me reviewing that movie, House of the Witch, it was an okay film. It has a very uh, decent characters, decent plot, a good premise, a good monster, but this movie was just absolutely worse than House of the Witch. Because clearly, I thought this movie was just a waste of time. Just check out House of the Witch. You won't regret it. You know, you can check it out if you want to, okay? Just check it out. So yeah, without uh, with that out of the way, if you enjoy my content, please like and comment, share and subscribe. And 2021 is going about to be on its way, so I hope you all be safe out there. Have a happy holidays, happy Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy birthday Jesus, happy everything. So yeah, hopefully we'll see the brighter things in the year 2021. I'm still waiting for Godzilla vs. Kong to come out. Like, come on, Wonder Brothers, give us the trailer already. So yeah, anyways, I hope you be safe out there and have a great time. Take care. Peace out. I'm out.